Hi, welcome to Let's Talk Bonds, the bond market podcast from INR Bonds. I'm Arjun Patsarthi and I have with me uh, Sambit Roy, a young research analyst with Capital Gate Investment Advisory, which is a SEBI registered uh, research analyst firm focused on providing the best in class fixed income and credit research to the bond market participants. We are going to, in this podcast, we are going to talk about the economic slowdown that is is becoming more and more apparent. And the current uh, recent RBI sanction on NBFCs and what it's the, what is the, uh, and what are their effects on the bond market and uh, what we can expect from the policy uh, going forward in terms of trying to ease the economic slowdown as well as making sure that the financial system is under pretty much a stable, um, a pretty much stable. And all this, uh, in all this, uh, what we can expect from RBI future policies, uh, how long will this economic slowdown continue? What could be this effect on government bonds and corporate bonds? We'll be covering all these topics in this podcast. And um, yeah, that, and uh, before we uh, go ahead, just you have to remember that bonds carry uh, interest rate risk, credit risk, and liquidity risk. Credit risk is the risk of default as well. And investors should be aware of the risks before they participate in the bond market. Now let's going back to the let's go, go get on with the podcast. Um, so economic slowdown is very clear. Uh, the it's becoming more and more apparent, and this is. Uh, uh, seen by the incoming uh, half yearly results that are coming out, um, uh, especially the lenders. Uh, here, Sambit has been covering all the lenders in terms of their earnings release and the um, and uh, the kind of uh, guidance the the management has provided or the kind of insights they have provided into the business. So, Sambit, can you tell me what's happening with the uh, 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 second half earnings calendar and also where all are you seeing slowdown parent and stress in terms of lending uh, as well as some of the macro stuff including uh, uh, liquidity and uh, inflation and um, uh, foreign flows and the rupee dollar dollar rupee where all uh, so what if you can cover some of these aspects as well it would have a, have a good insight into the, uh, as we go along this podcast. Uh, hi, uh, currently we have seen uh, the microfinance sector uh, being in the news lately. That is mainly because uh, RBI is sanctioned uh, to a few of the NBFCs uh, that post a wake up call to the MFI sector to reduce their prices and the uh, slow disbursements to the over leveraged borrowers. RBI, this is not the first time RBI has uh, done this. RBI had already flagged uh, the microfinance uh, space in UP, Bihar, uh, and that area uh, earlier this year due to overheating in the microfinance space. Uh, in this uh, quarter two, a lot of uh, microfinance uh, companies, uh, NBFCs, and uh, uh, banks have seen uh, slow growth and uh, some stress in this microfinance sector, especially in the unsecured loans uh, sector. Uh, this uh, may lead to the higher cost of capital and uh, they might face challenges in uh, equity fundraising. Uh, recently, we have seen uh, Navi FinServe, uh, RBA had posted a, a sanction on them, uh, due to which they've already canceled 100 crores of uh, bond issuance. So this uh, indicate uh, further that uh, the cost of capital might increase for these uh, in the MFI space. Uh, and uh, moving to the banks, these banks have uh, increased their provisioning uh, for uh, for the microfinance sector. And uh, they, the management commentary is basically that uh, the microfinance sector will, the stress will not worsen, but uh, this may stay for a quarter or so uh, before uh, normalizing. And uh, the RBI governor is also of the opinion that inflation might moderate in uh, quarter four, uh, although the glo- global uh, conflicts pose a risk. 
बट द रेट कट एक्सपेक्टेशन इज दर्ली ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फाइव देर माइंड फिफ्टी बेसिस रेट कट बाई दरबीआई बट दैट डिपेंड्स ऑन द सीपीआई विच इज करेंटली एट फाइव पॉइंट फोर नाइन पर्सेंट एज ऑफ सेप्टेंबर ऑइल प्राइसेस हैव ऑल्सो सीन एन ईजिंग ओवर द वीक बट ओइंग टू द सीज फायर टॉक्स इन द मिडल ईस्ट ओके fine so now apart from the microfinance like uh, there are um, also you know we, what we could see is some of the lenders in the other uh, uh, other uh, lending segments including uh, commercial vehicles um and uh, obviously the unsecured lenders who are doing personal loan lending like uh, navi where rbi was uh, you know who had uh, you know flagged off some kind of uh, uh, some kind of issues uh, on the, and sanctions on unsecured uh, um, personal loan lenders as well now the uh, so it's it's not even that it's only the mfi that are actually seeing some kind of a stress obviously the stress seem to be a little more apparent there but uh, the other uh, areas also we have seen some of the nbfcs that are lending into other segments including secured credit they are also seeing signs of slowdown and many of the banks including uh, the top banks have also flagged off the, the fact that the growth has not been very uh, is not going to be robust going forward and there are challenges ahead now in other areas of uh, what we can see for example the it sector again the growth is like um, there has been growth but not a very strong growth we also anecdotal evidence shows that you know the vehicle manufacturers at the dealer level vehicle a lot of inventory build up is happening so all this is pointing to a very clear uh, uh, slow down in the economy and uh, the question is where will this go and how long will it continue and what kind of effect it can have on the markets as a whole uh sambit can you just tell me what is the uh, i mean how has the dollar rupee been trading and also how the f- portfolio inflows uh, inflows of uh, foreign investors in october uh, this month and also uh, the the kind of uh, liquidity that is there in the system has it been going up or coming down Uh, for the past two weeks, the dollar rupee has uh, been range bound at around eighty four and currently trading at eighty four zero seven. On the liquidity side, uh, in the past month, the liquidity has uh, come down to about uh, fifty sixty thousand uh, crores uh, in the in the banking sector. Okay, so it's come down, right? And the yes, liquidity. Sorry, sorry. and foreign investors have been net sellers in october yeah right? foreign investors have turned net sellers after purchasing about 1 billion dollars in q1 they have been a net seller of at around rupees 10 billion till october 25 okay uh, it should be rupees 10 billion dollar 10 billion dollar 10 yeah. dollar 10 billion right <laughs> right and but i think the foreign exchange reserves have been pretty reasonable but at around 690 billion dollars is that uh, correct yes sir uh, forex reserves have touched a record high of around uh, 702 billion uh, by mid october it is currently mm-hmm. at around 690 okay now uh, just coming back to the rbi sanctions they have sanctioned four companies nbfcs right yes, uh, in the, which are the four they have sanctioned in terms uh, of it's uh, arohan Uh, Ashirwad Microfinance, it's yeah. DMI Finance, and Navi Finsur. Navi Finsur, four of them they have sanctioned. Yes, four of them. Okay, fine. I think uh, they also mentioned RBI Governor mentioned that in the uh, policy speech in October that uh, they are very clear that they want to make sure that uh, growth is NBFCs are growing at reasonable pace and not over uh, over uh, uh, growing too fast and providing. Uh, <clears throat> and pushing loans to show growth for their investors so maybe that is one of the reasons why they have uh, imposed uh, s- some sanctions obviously we have seen rbi imposing sanctions and then <coughs> excuse me and then uh, <coughs> and then uh, uh, also re uh, also take uh, also 
take our take take away the sanctions uh, after everything is stabilized. So we guess that it, this could also happen to these companies. But having said that, uh, we should uh, invest bond bond markets are definitely getting a little wary to in on credits especially especially because there are two pronged uh, aspects here. One is that uh, the uh, slowdown has also impacted lenders as men, as seen in the uh, as seen in the half yearly results of many of the lenders. Uh, some of the equity prices of the lenders have fallen sharply as well, indicating that my equity markets too are expecting a slower growth ahead. And the third is that they are worried about the RBI sanctions. So all this has definitely hit the risk aversion of investors in the credit market. Having said that. Um, the credit uh, good uh, market will always um, give more premium towards uh, very strong, fundamentally strong uh, borrowers who have been consistent. Even if they show show slower growth, the they would be in they would be having enough uh, liquidity. Their fund their uh, yeah their gearing would be very not, uh, very reasonable. They wouldn't have been growing at a hectic pace and uh, they would have been managing their ALM prudently. So these are the aspects that uh, would uh, investors would uh, study for uh, any bond that they want to purchase of, invest in any of the uh, lenders. Um, and Sambath here is uh, providing those informations through his analysis of capital gate, from capital gate. Um, uh, however, going back to the uh, economic slowdown front. Now, what this effectively means is that uh, while uh, while there are clear-cut signs of an economic slowdown, what would the RBI actions be? Some bit had mentioned that they could cut policy rates by 50 basis points next year. But uh, if this is um, if the slowdown is seeing more apparent, and uh, RBI does want to provide some kind of a uh, uh, relief to in consumers and uh, borrowers, then uh, the, the the first base 50 basis points could could come in a, by December itself, December 24, and uh, they could even signal another 50 basis point cut sometime during 25. So what this effectively means that interest rates can come down. The repo rate has been at six and a half percent for a while now, and if it comes down to six percent or five and a half percent. Now there could uh, be more um, uh, that interest as interest rates come fall, then prices of government bonds also rise depending on which maturity or bucket you are in. Uh, so investors would definitely want to uh, you know take a call on whether uh, on interest rates coming down if that's what they believe in, and also uh, if if the interest rates are going to come down and stay down for a long period of time, then which would also mean that. Uh, all the other savings rate could come down, then they would also looking, be searching for uh, places where they can get higher returns, obviously with the kind of risk that they are willing to measure, and with obviously well-researched uh, investments across the um, bond investing segment. Um, so this, uh, so clearly uh, two um, conclusions emerge from today's podcast. One is economic slowdown is definitely uh, apparent and is on the cards. The RBI could take cognizance of this and start to um, act on rates as early as December 24, which is the one more month. And uh, the base case uh, from a base case of 50 basis point cut, market could actually look at 100 basis points cut over the next one year. And uh, given this, that uh, market should start positioning itself for this kind of a rate cut. The second is obviously that uh, uh, there is a stress on uh, lenders uh, in terms of uh, all their parameters, which is I mean in terms of the growth, in terms of um, in terms of their provisionings, in terms of delinquencies, etc. So lenders uh, would have to uh, make sure that they are comfortable on liquidity, comfortable on uh, capital adequacy, maintain a good. Um, coverage ratios also make sure that uh, they are able to handle delinquencies well and reduce and either keep their NPS from growing too fast or keep it stable 
and these are the lenders that markets would uh, look at to invest in while other lenders who are um, fundamentally unsound and have grown too fast then markets would be very wary about these kind of lenders so thank you very much uh, sambit um, for coming in and providing your insights um, and uh, and those of you who have been listening to inr bonds please do follow us on all podcast channels um, and uh, uh, and if you have any feedback do provide us the feedback thank you very much